Hi everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Today is Thursday, January 25th. It's around 7.30 New York time. Uh, so uh, tomorrow we'll be getting the big PCE report out of the U.S. at 8.30 in the morning. Expectations are for PCE to rise by 0.2% month over month, up from negative 0.1% last month. Year over year is expected to be flat at 2.6%. Core PCE deflator month over month uh, up 0.2 versus 0.1, and the year over year number is expected to come in at 3.0. Also, we're expected to get personal income seen rising 0.3% versus 0.4, personal spending up 0.5 versus last month's 0.2. Um, and so that will take us basically to the markets and where we are currently. Uh, clearly, economic data here in the U.S. today was strong. Uh, that led to a rally in the dollar. You also had the ECB rate announcement decision, uh, which I think most participants walked away with the idea that the ECB was going to start cutting rates at some point in the not too distant future. Uh, and that got the euro weakening when you looked at it in total. And uh, really, when we go from here, again, the euro has uh, really struggled to get above this 10 day exponential moving average. It struggled to break this trend line now for a second day in a row. It moved uh, up and then down. Uh, and here you can see now it's actually trading just a little bit below these prior lows uh, from the past few days. Uh, and really more importantly, what appears to be some sort of longer term support level around this 108 area that goes all the way back to this point in time. If it breaks, uh, which also happens to be the 200 day moving average. Um, I think it's going to open the door to much lower levels in the euro, perhaps towards 107, uh, 25 or so, if not even lower than that. Uh, again, there's still room to go here because you still have an RSI that's only in the low 40. So this is a very, very important level right here. I think I think I can't understate that enough because uh, clearly the next level is somewhere in this region. Plus, there's this uptrend that's clearly been broken and a break of support and the 200 day moving average would certainly um, be confirmation of a break of trend. When we go over over and look at the pound, you can see that the pound is just continuing to consolidate sideways here. It's really not giving us a lot of, uh, of a directional hint. Uh, I think for the pound that continues to remain the case that we have upside resistance around 127 and a half downside support around 126 and three quarters. Uh, until we break one way or the other, we're just going to have to kind of wait and see, unfortunately, because you can see actually that the pound is trading right with its 10 day exponential moving average. So we can't even really give one side the edge at this point. The only thing you have sort of giving you the slightest bit of a clue is this downward trend in the RSI. But even that has kind of flattened out more recently. So the pound, we're just sort of waiting to see what's going to happen here. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's really hard to make a very bold prediction. Um, so I think at this point, we're just stuck waiting to see what happens. When we move over to the DAX, we were talking about the potential of a bull flag and a breakout. And uh, the DAX didn't really make much progress today, finishing up just uh, about 10 basis, uh, finishing up about 10 basis points or so. And we look at it more closely. You can see that we basically got up to yesterday's highs and that's where we stopped. So it hasn't really seen much progress. We're still waiting to see if we can get back up to this 16,960 area, which was an area of resistance two times now, or if this region in here is going to prove to be a resistance level. Clearly, if we were to move lower tomorrow, that would make this much a much stronger resistance level and would really start you know, raising some questions as to whether or not this was a breakout of a bull flag. Um, so we'll just have to see how that plays out. Again, I think upside right now is you're really targeting this area to see what happens. Uh, there is a giant gap down to 16,630 that needs to be filled at some point as well. And another gap down here at 16,550. So there's um, some good reasons to think that there might be some downside coming in the DAX because overhead resistance right now appears to be fairly strong. Again, if we break out of this uh, 16,970 area, I think it probably serves as confirmation that this was a bull flag and the DAX has much further to go. A failure to do that, I think, would be a very negative signal. Next, if we 
take a look at the at the, the U.S. markets here, the Nasdaq 100. Um, that uh, was higher today, uh, and then we came back down into the end of the day, but we managed to finish just a little bit higher. Overall, the Nasdaq has this uh, you know this big uh, uptrend still in it. Um, it is still in this overbought territory, although it's not as overbought as it may have been yesterday. Um, essentially, you know, you can see that the RSI is up to 75 and a half. You're trading at the upper end of the Bollinger Band. You basically were trading through it yesterday. So this is sort of a, a signal again that you're overextended, that we're looking to see a sideways consolidation or some sort of pullback in the index over the near term. Again, when we just look at it more closely, uh, you can see that really over the last couple of days, we haven't really gone anywhere since Monday, just kind of trading in this range. Um, again, we had a very big move up on Friday, and then since then we've just been trading more or less sideways with really not much direction. So we'll just have to see again. Like this is, you know, clearly the, the uptrend has been very strong, but like I've noted, this is an overbought and overextended area, and we, we've seen this happen before. Uh, where we get these overextended periods and then we tend to pull back, right? And we're looking at this from two standpoints. You're looking at it not just from a Bollinger Band standpoint. It's the aspect of both conditions being met that I think leads to this consolidation or pullback with a RSI over 70 and a Bollinger Band that's been breached to the upside. Uh, when we look at the Dow, the Dow actually had a pretty decent day today despite things like UNH being down pretty sharply. But even the Dow is, uh, you know, struggling a little bit here because you haven't, you, you know, again, you have this upper Bollinger Band acting a little bit as resistance. You can see what's happening also right beneath it is that you have this 10-day exponential moving average now that's sort of creeping up to it. And it actually served nearly as support today. Uh, and this is something that we're going to watch closely now. If the, if the Dow can continue to just move higher, right, then, and it just continues to grind up with the 10-day exponential moving average acting as support, then that's a very bullish situation. If for some reason we were to see it cross below the 10-day tomorrow and you were to cross back below this 37,770 area, this is something we pay attention to to see then if this begins to act as a resistance level again, and this is just maybe a false move higher. So because you can see over the last uh, you know couple of weeks at this level between at least the end of December and the middle of January, this was a big level of resistance. And this 10-day exponential moving average was also kind of anchoring the market down. So I'd watch how to see how this opens. I'd watch to see if you can clear this level of resistance at 38,100 quickly. If you can, then you can have room to run significantly higher. You can... You could say that maybe this is a mini bull flag and that if that's a mini bull flag, then maybe you can get, you know, again, some uh, extension here, uh, maybe up to 38,950 uh, or maybe 38,750. So maybe a range of 38,750 to 39,000 if you can clear this this level up in here uh, at 39 at 38,100. And finally, we'll take a look at the Canadian dollar. Um, the U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, you can see that we had this big move down. We had this big move down. We've broken out of this downtrend. We've broken this downtrend. So right now, there's not really much in the way of resistance stopping this from potentially getting back up to around 135.90 uh, or so. This would be your level of resistance right here because you had this big straight line drop basically in, um, you know, at the end of uh, starting in the middle of December through uh, basically the end of December, and we've been rebounding since. We've reclaimed the 10-day exponential moving average. That's certainly acting as support. Here you can also see the 50-day moving average. We're breaking above that level of resistance, and today it acted as uh, a support level, and here's your 200-day moving average. We're also attempting to clear that as well. So if we were able to successfully pass all these moving averages here, I think there's a clean run up to around 135 135.90. If not, we could get a retest here of this trend line, potentially back towards 133.20 over the next couple of days. 
But again, momentum looks like it's reestablishing itself here. We have a broken trend line. Now we're just waiting to see if we can continue to push higher. We're above the 50 area. So we're just waiting to see if we can get this thing back up towards 70 or so. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.